Hi, welcome to another episode of Thrifty Shopping Cart. So this is going to be a video showing you my sales for eBay and Amazon for the month of January. Um, before I start, I just want to let you know that it's not that much, um, but every little money I make online does go towards my student loans. So I mostly sell online to pay off my student loans. Um, a couple years back, I took out a loan to went to school for a degree in, um, in like graphic design. And I went to a community college. I was done, I graduated, but then I could never find a job. So I just never decided to continue on with the career because I was having such a hard time finding a job with an associate's degree. So I decided to go more towards in the medical field work. So I do have a full-time job. I do work uh, in the medical field as administrative assistant. So that's what I do full time. But um, I still have to pay the debt. Even though I did not complete my uh, bachelor's in graphic design, but because I had already signed, I took out the loan, so I'm fully responsible for that. So I haven't even made a debt into the loan, but um, I know every little bit counts. So I just wanted to explain that to you guys before I show you my sales. Um, so these sales, they're not that great, they're not that bad. Uh, they're For me, they're fine because I'm still new with eBay, I'm still new with Amazon, I'm still learning what sells, what doesn't sell. Um, the only way you're gonna learn exactly what to sell is you have to go to trial and error. So that's how I learned. I, I've been selling stuff online for almost three years now. Um, I don't normally make a lot of money in the week. I usually make most of my money like towards the end of the month. Um, so the first one I want to show you is this one here. This is a vintage plastic um, patent coach bag. I had bought this at the Goodwill. I purchased it for $13. Um, it sold for $35. The buyer did pay $7.05 after fees from eBay and PayPal, which came out to $5.73, I made a growth profit of $17.30. It's not that great. <clears throat> the thing with coach bags, it's, I mean, sometimes you can make like $50, $60, $80, but they have to be kind of new. Um, coach bags, I don't know, I hope this doesn't offend anyone, but I feel like coach bags were more popular like eight years ago. I kind of see so many coach bags at the Goodwill stores or at the Salvation Army stores or even at yard sales. Um, when you go into Macy's, sometimes they're marked down. So <clears throat> it's not really a high, um, it's not like hard to find. But I know the vintage ones like this one, this particular brand, um, I know that one is a rare one. But I wish I had, I did put it up for $50. Nobody was buying it for $50. So then I lower it to, <clears throat> I forgot I forgot how much I lowered it to. But I think I lowered it to somewhere around 20 something dollars and then they just bid on it. It bid up to 35 bucks. I mean, it's not bad. I did buy it for $13 and um, I got a profit of $17.30. So that was that coach bag. <clears throat> the other item I sold, oh. Before I get into it, but I'll, I'll explain why I did that side. Um, it's Drivers and Utilities CD. So I had purchased this at the Goodwill by the Pound. I purchased it for $0.99. Cents. I sold it for $7. Um, shipping paid by... So the, the shipping was paid by me. I do apologize. It was not $7. It was actually free. So that is a typo. Oops. Um, the fees were $1.20, and the gross profit was $4.81 is what I made for a profit. The reason why I did that side first, because I had sold this to a buyer um, for free shipping, and um, normally free shipping does take anywhere from 7 to 10 days, but it's not that I'm, you know, I'm upset with the buyer or anything like that. It's just that they keep sending me emails like, Acid, where is the CD? I haven't seen it yet. And, you know, I politely said uh, the tracking number. I, I always give 
my customers a tracking number. That way they could keep track of where their item is. And I also said, um, you know, you could look at the post office website. They have um, a section where you could put your track in it and it'll tell you where your package is. So I told them it's still in transit, but I don't know. This buyer was just like, you know, you always get, <clears throat> I always find sometimes, guys, like I get issues with certain sellers. You'll always get one for every maybe a hundred sales that you make on eBay. There's always that one that will just like ask you the same questions over and over again. Um, just like constantly like sending you emails and things like that. All you could do is just kill them with kindness. Um, even though sometimes like, you know, I before I sent my email, I always read over it because sometimes I might come off a little rough on the email, but it's not that I'm being rude. It's just that <clears throat> like, you already explained it. Why don't they understand what you're telling them? But that was that story with that one. Um, hopefully, I, I did send them again. I said <clears throat> they probably should get it either by Monday or I'm crossing my finger by Wednesday. We sent emails. You know, there's no bad blood between us. It's just that the back and forth with the email and things like that. So that was that one. <clears throat> So the next item, this one was a big one. This was um, the Kiss, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, Kachara, I think. <clears throat> so I bought it $3.99 at Savers. I sold it for $45. Um, shipping was paid by buyer, $3.99. Um, Amazon fees were $9.09. .09. I made a gross profit of $39.90. Now, if you sell on Amazon, <clears throat> they usually give you some type of credit because most of the time your buyer will pay $3.99 but the shipping could be $2.72 because of media mail or it could be $2.94 so when that change is left over I think they already estimated with the Amazon fee so usually they'll set you exactly how much you'll get so this one was it was a rare hard to find CD if you come across a CD at a submission army store or a Goodwill pick it up it is right now on Amazon going anywhere because the prices have gone up anywhere from $65 to $100 and up. So I believe $100 it has to be practically brand new. Uh, but in between, you could still get $50 or $60. Uh, but I was very happy with this because I only spent about $4 on it and I got almost 40 bucks in return. That was a very good, a good flip for me. I was very happy with that one. Um, <clears throat> the next one I got was a total balance um, fitness video. So this one, I bought it for a dollar. I sold it for 17 bucks. Um, buyer did pay shipping, which was $3.99. Amazon fees were $4.89 with the credit that you get. So I got back $18.18. .18. I hope that's correct. Um, but that's what they sent to me. So hopefully that's what I got. Um, so if you come across Especially around the month of January is a like a really hot month for people to work out, lose weight, even going into like the winter months. People get really into it. If you pick them up, some of them are worth money, some of them are not. The only way you're gonna know is to scan them. Um, I because this one I didn't think it was worth anything. I just saw the woman on the cover and I said, oh, you know, it's a dollar. I'll just get it. So, but when I got home, I saw that it was going for close to twenty. The brand new, they were going close to like twenty twenty five dollars. So I could not sell my new. I could not sell like used new. I sell it like used good because the previous owner had bought the CD. There were a little bit of scratches in the back, but it worked out fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So that's how I sold it for on Amazon. Um, the other thing too, you could do maybe not Amazon, but I did see a couple of um, sellers. What they were doing was they're taking some exercise uh, DVDs CDs they put them out in a lot and you could sell them that way uh, there are a bunch of ways that you could sell the fitness DVDs <clears throat> the other item I have is this is an audiobook um, I forgot let me see some of the pictures are cut off um, I do apologize for that it's mixed in file basil so I bought this 10 cents, guys. I, I know. It's just, I couldn't believe it. I bought it 10 cents. I sold it for $9.95. Um, 
Uh, buy it, then pay shipping for $3.99. Amazon fees were $3.83. Um, I made a profit of $10.11 because I had credit from the shipping. Because the shipping did come out to only like $2.72. Uh, but I don't get the extra shipping. Amazon, what they do is they combine the fees and then they give you like a, like a little bit of estimate credit. So that's how you would get that money. So what I wanted to say is when you go to your Goodwill um, outlets, um, you might find this at Savers, but Savers, Salvation Army Store, they might charge a little bit more. You really can get the stuff at a Goodwill outlet, like by the pound. I found a stack. Like, I don't even know how many because I haven't even gotten through them yet. They were in a huge CD um, insert binder. There must have been at least 20 or 30 of them, like all different types of audio CDs. So <clears throat> I don't have the actual case that this audio CD came in. I don't even have the booklet. All I had were the CDs. I think that one came with either two or three CDs. So what I do is I let my buyers know that they're just buying just the CD. They're not gonna get the booklet, they're not gonna get the actual CD case. I had bought also at the Goodwill outlet, it was a, a packet of jewel case CDs. So what I do is I take the audio CDs, I put them in that jewel uh, CD case, and then I send it to my customer. So that's what I do. So if you come across them, pick them. I didn't even search on Amazon because I figured if I'm paying 10 cents for this big thing, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make my money back. And I did. So that, so if you come across audio um, CDs, they're very popular on Amazon. Uh, but I did run into an incident, guys. Got to be careful too, because a lot of times there's some people, they don't really read the description. They most look for the titles. And I had an audio book it was about, I think it was like 10, but I only had six. I was missing four. And I let my buyer know. So this one was worth $120. I, when I come up with the name, I will, I'll, um, I'll show it to you guys because I will have it. I will be doing a quick money tip um, series again for this Friday. So I might just throw that in there just to show you guys um, that audio. So I put in this, the description, missing four CDs. I even put it in the title in bold face letters. Someone bought it for $20. After two weeks, they sent me an email. Oh, I didn't realize that it was missing. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, you didn't put that. So then when I said, uh, I did put that in the description. So what I did was I copy paste exactly what I had in my description. I emailed to the customer. They apologized. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, can I just have the money back? I'll send you back the audio. I said, okay. So I, I happily took the money back and I did got the CDs back. This lady was very nice. She wrapped it up for me individually and she, she was a nice person. So, but the thing is, um, that's the thing I said, like, even when you sell these audio CDs, you could put them in the the title, even the description, you'll always get that one buyer that did not fully read the descriptions. Um, but that's just a little a little bit of tip um, just to let you guys know that if you are going to sell them, those are things to look out for. The last item I have, this is not really worth that much. Um, it's Paradise. Um, so it's a, a musical CD. Uh, this came out in 1998. I didn't even know who this um, artist was, but I just picked it up because it was wrapped in a package. I got it at the Goodwill outlet, a dollar. I sold it for four bucks. Um, shipping was paid by buyer for three ninety nine. Um, Amazon fees were two dollars and ninety four cents. With some credit, I made five dollars and five cents. So, um, all together, guys, if my math is correct, and um, I added the correct amount that Amazon and eBay had emailed me. That I made, I made $95.35. Uh, my monthly payment for my student loans is $178. Um, so I out of I put $95.35 towards the $178. I only had to put $82 out of my full-time paycheck, which was excellent. So I was very happy that I, you know, I was able to pay this off. Um, every little bit helped because that's $95 I didn't have to use out of my personal check. Uh, this was 
items that I bought for not even, if I added all the things I got together, I didn't even spend $20. So to me, I think that's a good investment, what I'm doing. It might take me a long time to pay off the loan, but I figured this is a good way to pay it off. Um, I'm hoping next month to make, I'm hoping giving myself a goal to make $150. I hope I can make that next month. Or I hope I can make more, but I give myself a realistic goal because I know how I sell. Um, it takes a lot of time to list things on eBay. Um, Amazon is very simple, but you got to be careful with Amazon because there are some people who are extremely picky. Like <clears throat> if you say a book is used good, you have to explain how it's used good. You got to explain if there's something wrong with the spine, if it's bent, if it's, you know, if part of the uh, book cover is curled up or if there's right inside, you got to put all that. And that takes time for you to actually sit down and search. Um, eBay, the pictures, um, SD, the tags, the pictures, the description, you know, how to make yourself fine. Um, you know, those are all the things. So it is a full-time job itself. But um, I do have a schedule that I am going to be working on. That way I can get more things listed on eBay because the more you list, the more you sell. I don't list that much on eBay. I don't even have 50 items in my store. Um, so that's part of the problem why I only make so little. But anyways, guys, if you like what you just saw, definitely please subscribe. Um, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.